Hello friends, I'm so glad you can be with us today because we're going to be covering a very important topic for those of us with mature skin who are over 50, over 60, over 70 and beyond. And that is how do we go about choosing a foundation that's right for us? There are five important questions to ask and we'll be covering all five of those questions. Just wondering if you've ever looked in the mirror and wondered who that woman was looking back at you. Or perhaps you can identify with one of the women who was in one of my recent makeup classes for women 50 plus who said, you know, I wake up and I feel like I'm 20 something and then I look in the mirror and I think, what the blink happened? I think maybe something like that, similar to that at least, has happened to all of us over the past few years. And if it has, you've certainly come to the right place. My name is Elise and I'm a professional working makeup artist who's passionate about helping all of us who are 50 plus look on the outside how we feel on the inside so we can look and feel our confident best. And I hope you'll join our family of subscribers by subscribing to our channel. And you'll notice that there's below the video on the right, a little icon of a bell. And if you click that bell icon, you'll be notified every time we have a new video available, which will be every Thursday. And if you choose to do that, I thank you so much in advance. Well, I was recently walking down the cosmetic aisle at one of the major department stores and I wanted to check out the newer foundations. What was going on? What was available? What kinds of options did I have? Well, it was quite interesting because at the department store that I was looking at, I stopped at one counter and there were six different foundation options. I stopped at another counter and there were 12 different foundation options. And at the last counter I stopped at, there were 20 different foundation options. Well, thinking that maybe there were fewer options with drugstore foundations, when I went home, I went online to check out a few major drugstore brands. Well, I was dead wrong because with the major drugstore brands, there was one a company that offered 23 different foundations and another one that offered 15 different foundations. And I just want to say at this point that it's really hard to order foundation online. And if you've ever done it, you probably realize that it's just difficult to tell from the little pictures they have online as well as the names of the foundations if it's going to work for you. So I highly recommend if you can do it to stop by a department store, go by the various brands at their counters and check out different kinds of foundations. Look at the names and swatch some to find out what color is going to work best for you. And by the way, when you swatch, it's a really good idea to put a little bit of foundation sort of on the lower part of your cheek and then bring it down your neck slightly. Uh, that will give you the best way to determine if it's going to work into your skin tone. The other thing to do is once you've narrowed your choice down to maybe the two or three best foundations, take a little bit of that foundation and put it on a larger area of your face. One foundation on one side, another one that looks like it might work on the other side. Putting it on a larger section of your face will really tell you which one is going to be the better match for you. Okay, so let's dive into the four questions you can ask to determine what foundation is going to work the very best for your skin and for you. The first thing to consider is what your skin type is. So you're either going to have dry skin, oily skin, or combination skin. And usually if we have combination skin, it means that there's a little bit of oiliness in our T-zone from our forehead down to our chin. And there is a foundation available through most brands that works for your particular skin type. There will be specific foundations that work best for dry skin, some that work better for oily skin, uh, so make sure that you're picking a foundation that is going to work best for your skin type. That's the first thing to help you narrow down what foundations are going to be right for you. The second question to ask is what kind of coverage do you want? Do you want a very light coverage, which would probably be a tinted moisturizer? That is the least coverage you're going to get. Or do you want a light foundation coverage or a medium foundation coverage? 
or a heavier foundation coverage. And by heavier coverage, I don't mean that it feels heavier on your skin necessarily. It just means it provides fuller coverage. So it will cover up your skin more completely than a light or a medium foundation coverage will. And one way to determine what kind of coverage you're getting with a foundation is to apply a little bit of that foundation on the underside of your wrist. Uh, and cover, try to cover up that vein area. Now I'm going to test a couple of foundations so you can see what I'm talking about. I have with me foundation that some of you may be familiar with. It's from Clinique. It's called Beyond Perfecting. And this is the foundation in the Clinique line that has the greatest amount of coverage. So I'm going to put a little bit on my wrist. And then I'm going to take a second foundation from Clinique which has a slightly less coverage. This is more of a medium coverage foundation. This is called Even Better Glow. And I'm going to take a tiny bit of that foundation and put that across. Whoops, get a little bit more here. Put that across my wrist. Now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but I put Beyond Perfecting, which is the foundation that has the greatest coverage at the top of my wrist and I put the one that has lesser coverage underneath it. And from I can certainly tell by looking at it, it may not have been that apparent on the camera, that the Beyond Perfecting absolutely covered up my vein area. And I'm going to wipe that off because otherwise I will end up getting it all over me at some point today. Okay. So that's important to know is what kind of coverage do you want? Now, some people need more coverage in some areas of their face than others. For most of us, we have more redness in this area of our face as we get a little bit older. So some people find it helpful to try two different foundations, have two different ones that they mix together, and maybe use a foundation with a little bit heavier coverage in this area and lighter coverage toward the outer areas of their face or where they need less coverage. Another option is to buy one foundation and then if you need heavier coverage in some areas, you may just want to dot a little bit of concealer over the foundation to give you a little bit more coverage. So there are a number of ways you can approach it. The third thing to consider is what kind of finish do you want with the foundation? There are a number of different finishes. There's all matte, which means you get no, uh, sh no shine, no reflection whatsoever. And there are what they call a satin finish, where there's a little bit of a sheen, not a lot. There is semi-matte, which again is maybe a little bit of a sheen. And then there are foundations that provide more of a moisturized or dewy look, a little bit of a glow. Now, if you have oily skin, you do have to be careful of foundations that provide some dewiness or glow because sometimes with oily skin, that can translate into looking greasy, which is not a look we'd probably be after. Again, with this kind of choice, with the different finishes for foundation, you can choose a couple of different ones and combine them. For instance, uh, most of us probably wouldn't want a lot of shine in this area of our face. So sometimes I'll take more of a matte foundation and use it just on the inner part of my face. And I'll choose a foundation that has more glow on the outer part of my face. Another thing you can do if you want to have just a matte finish foundation is you can use a primer or some other kind of liquid. And they have a lot of liquids now that provide glow. And one of them I can think of is something from Charlotte Tilbury called Flawless Filter, which provides a little bit of glow and you can put it on underneath a matte foundation for an instance and get a little bit more glow. So that's something to consider as well. What kind of finish do you want? Matte, semi-matte, satin, or more of a dewy look? The fourth thing to consider is whether you want your foundation to contain SPF. Now, if foundations have SPF, most of the time it's only at a level 15. Most skincare professionals will tell you you should have at least an SPF of 30, if not higher. Now, there are some foundations out there that do have an SPF of 30 or even 50. So if that's something that's important to you to have a high SPF, 
with your foundation, there certainly are options out there. One that I can think of is one from IT Cosmetics, that's IT Cosmetics, which stands for Innovative Technologies. They do have a foundation that has a 50 SPF in it. The last thing to consider, number five, is what your skin undertone is because that can make a world of difference in choosing a foundation that is gonna really make your skin look its best. I was working with a woman at the makeup counter for one of the major cosmetics companies I was working for for a number of years. And she came in and she just said, you know, I just can't help but think I have the wrong foundation because I'm just not liking how it looks on my skin. And sure enough, she was absolutely right. It really made her skin look ashy. So when I did some testing, it was clear to me that she was using a foundation for a warm undertone when she actually had a cool undertone to her skin. So we changed to a different foundation that worked with her cool undertone and it made a huge difference and she could tell immediately as I could. Now, if you're not sure what your skin undertone is, I would love to have you uh, find out through a series of nine questions that are available in another video that I did. And I'll, I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. So if you want to find out what your skin undertone is, going through those nine questions can really be helpful. Those are the five questions to ask yourself in order to choose the right foundation. But there are also a few other tips that I want to give you. And first of all, Another thing that's really important for your foundation to look its best is for you to exfoliate your skin on a regular basis. As we get a little bit older, the dead skin cells become more frequent and unfortunately our skin cells don't turn over as often as they did when we were young. And what dead skin cells do is they make our skin look dull. So using some kind of exfoliating product in almost every brand of cosmetics from drugstore to higher end has some kind of exfoliating product. Also, there are DIY recipes that you can also use. And frankly, if you Google them and look up DIY recipe for exfoliation, you will probably find a recipe where all the ingredients are in your pantry at home. And that's certainly an option as well. Another thing to think about is the importance of retaining moisture in your skin. As most of us get older, most of us will have drier skin. Now that's not always the case, but it certainly can be the case. So applying a good moisturizer before you put on foundation is absolutely important. And especially depending on the climate you live in, if you live in a drier climate, it's even more important to get that moisturizer on your skin. Or you can certainly check to see if they have some kind of good skincare ingredients in them. For instance, like green tea extract that can be helpful to skin as well. The other thing that's important to consider is many of us may have used a powder foundation when we were younger or a mineral foundation. And sometimes as we get a bit older and our skin gets drier, we need to switch over to a liquid or cream foundation. And for a long time, I thought cream would just feel way too heavy. But actually, I've found a cream foundation that I really like that does not feel heavy at all on the skin. And just as an FYI, it happens to be a foundation made by a makeup artist by the name of Eve Pearl, who does the makeup for the women on The View. And her foundation can be found on her website or at QVC. By the way, I just want to mention one other foundation that might be of interest to you if you're looking for a dewy foundation. It's one that's pretty recent and it's one by Anastasia of Beverly Hills. It's called Luminous Foundation and it does have a beautiful glow to it. Well, in the next video that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be covering how you can actually go about finding that foundation once you've answered those four questions. And in that video, I'll also give you a rundown of, I think it's maybe six or seven foundations that I've been doing a lot of research on that seem to work the best 
for those of us who have more mature skin. Now, every skin type is different, of course, so what works for me may not work for you. But there are some that get high marks from an awful lot of women who are over 50, and I'll be sure to provide that list of foundations for you, which will provide a good starting point, at least, for you to check out. Thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. If these tips have been helpful, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. And if you know someone else who might benefit from some of the tips we've talked about, feel free to share this video with them. I'd also love it if you'd share in the comment section below what foundation you found that has really worked well for your skin. And if you could tell us what your skin type is, if it's dry, if it's oily, or if it's combination, what kind of finish it is, and what you particularly like about it, that would be terrific because it's a wonderful way that we can help each other help find a foundation that's really going to be our very best option. Thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate your time, the gift of your time. I know you have a lot of other things you can be doing. So thank you. I hope you'll join us next Thursday when we have our next video talking about products, and techniques that are helpful for those of us who are 50 plus. In the meantime, I hope you have a very healthy and happy and fabulous rest of your day. Take care. Thank you.